Bug It's Lee, how you doing? Uh, so I've been teasing for a couple days I'd be doing uh, an announcement this weekend of what, where I was headed with uh, the journalism I've been doing for the past eight years now. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm going to break this announcement up into two parts, theory and practice. <laughs> um, this is the theory part. I just want to talk about the broad idea. And really, this is based on feedback I've gotten from listening to people like you. That would be you. Uh, for, a, for a few years now, but also thinking I've been doing. Hang on one second. If I look like I'm fidgeting, I'm trying to pull glasses out of my pocket. There we go. So I want to keep I want to keep my glasses handy, my dollar readers handy. So um, <clears throat> let's talk about what I've what I I've, I've been hearing from people. So there's been um, a growing drumbeat, including in this election, that people look. We we know people are tired of the media. We know people are sick of the media. We know people don't believe the media, but what are you going to do about it, right? What are you going to do about it? That's the, that's a big question. It's one thing to kvetch and bitch about stuff. Uh, it's another thing to actually do something about it. And so the problem for a lot of people have been, they, I get asked all the time, this is a constant question, um, how do I tell what's really going on and what's a good objective news source? Now, I, so, Personally, just a brief background on this, in case you don't know, but just to remind you where I've come from. So I've been doing journalism professionally, I guess, for about eight years. I have a background in other stuff. I was a graphic artist. I was a teacher uh, uh, who did seminars on video production. I have a big background in video production and stuff like that. 3D graphics and animation, that kind of thing. But I edited magazines, right? So I edited magazines about video production, 3D graphics, and that sort of thing. This goes back 25 years. And uh, I, I, I've been interested in politics uh, for forever, right? Since I was a teenager, since I was 14, and a libertarian, <laughs> uh, handing out pamphlets for Ed Clark, and uh, for the Clark Coke campaign, right? That's how that's how old school I am. And then I kind of got out of politics for a while, and then I got back into it. Uh, and, and then, like I said, I've been doing journalism professionally for about eight years, where I made some comedy videos. I ended up writing for Huffington Post. I'm doing a real quick version of that story. Then, uh, about six years ago, something like that, was it? Uh, yeah, about six. About six years ago, I met uh, Andrew Breitbart, interviewed with Andrew, did some work with Andrew. Then I was kind of in a no man's land. There was a period there where I was writing for Huffington Post and Breitbart, one of the few to do that. And uh, then eventually I ran screaming from the left because it was too dishonest. So I have a unique perspective in the sense that I've been lucky to have written for two really big platforms, the Huffington Post and Breitbart News, two of the biggest platforms out there, okay? And I've also done political consulting work, and I've done videos, and I have a film I'm finishing up, and I have another film, I have another part to do, and just a bunch of stuff. So I have this, I have this perspective, because I got a technical, certain technical background. I know how to use computers. I've been a computer user since my TRS-80 Model 1 with 16K, not 4K, 16K, because I'm just that cool. Uh, you know, when I was 14 years old in 70, 79, 1979. So the problem for people with journalism has been they don't know where to turn, and I don't know where to tell them to turn. Even though I've written for HuffPost, and now I'm the lead investigative reporter for Breitbart News, I, I don't, I'm not going to tell you to go to Breitbart News and get all your news there, because I don't believe that, right? It's not that I don't like Breitbart. I do like Breitbart. But I don't think you should get all your news from one source. Okay? I think you should be slutty with your news gathering. Let me put it that way. I think that you should try to get your information from intentionally differing sources. I think you should try to do that. Uh, because that's the way you can figure out what's going on, what's actually happening. 
It's real simple. You can look at a claim, then you look at the counterclaim. And you seldom get the claims and the counterclaims from the same source, right? So I've been thinking about all this stuff, and that's what the, these, this announcement today has to do with, okay? So, and by the way, let me say all the, I, oh, I see, I, I, I do suck at, it's so weird for me to try to come on and go, hey, retweet this, but hey, retweet this. For like, I did a whole bunch of periscopes where I didn't do that. It's basic marketing, but I should be telling you to retweet this, so retweet it, please. Also, if you're not following me on Periscope, please follow me on Periscope. If you're not following me on Twitter, why not? That would be silly. Uh, so I'm lucky in the sense that I have these big platforms that I work for. I have close to 60,000 followers on Twitter, which is decent, right? Uh, I, you know, the past few Periscopes I'm done, I'm getting 15,000, 10,000 views, stuff like that. That's decent. But part of the problem has been it's very disparate. So I've been working as a journalist for eight years, and I honestly can't tell you even, forget, forget big picture, where do you get the truth? I can't even tell you where to go to get all my stories. If I talk about Benghazi, for instance, uh, uh, just using that as an example, it could be Black Lives Matter, it could be the institutional left, it could be the Pigford story, it could be the corruption I uncovered with the Republicans in South Dakota, or the Republicans at the National Right to Work Committee and Paul Inc. I've done big stories on a ton of this stuff and I can't tell you where to go to uh, look at them right now. That's, that's what's crazy. Uh, I'm, I, uh, for me, for me, this is my fault. I'm blaming myself here. I cannot send you to one place to go, well, here's where to read about my Benghazi stuff. I can send you to four or five places, but that's too hard. Does that make sense? Like, I know, it's not really, I mean, in the scheme of things, it's not uh, a Mars landing or anything like that, but it's too hard. But most importantly, for people, right, so I have this eight years of journalism I've done that I is just scattered hither and tither throughout the internet. So that's problem one for me, right? And it's a problem when I talk to people like you because I don't have any, it's just a mess, okay? But the, but the problem for people is they don't have any way to figure out what's actually true and what's not true. So, I'm trying to solve those problems. The announcement that I'm making, this is part one of that, is I'm going to be solving some of those problems. I'm, I'm going to be announcing in part two the specifics on a new website I, uh, I'm launching. It's actually not a new website, it's a, it's a reboot of an old website with an all-female cast. No, it's not. But it's a reboot of a website that I've had and it's going to, uh, I've been thinking a lot about this stuff. What can I do to make it easier for you to get smarter? What can I do to make it easier for you to be more informed about the news and what can I do to make it easier for you to see the reporting that I'm done because I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of an arrogant dick about my reporting because I'm right because I'm right because I'm very good at reporting and uh, it's tricky when you've written for Huffington Post and Breitbart and you do good work which I do and I and you do factual work which I do and you do work that's taken on both Democrats and Republicans which I have, and I've done stuff that's critical of Trump as well, and I'm a Trump supporter, but I don't believe in blind loyalty, and I'm not here to be a Trump booster in the sense, I think Hillary Clinton's evil and awful. I have never liked Hillary Clinton, and again, it's based on factual stuff. It's not based on personality. It's certainly not based on the fact that she's a woman any more than it's based on the fact that she's Lily White. It's not based on any personal characteristics of her, except the Clintons are corrupt liars who've made millions of dollars off of government. They're sort of a perfect example of a, of a, 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 a 60s radical Don Alinsky and all the corruption that that means. That's my short take on it. But again, that's all factually based. It's all based on, it's not conjecture. It's all stuff I could prove to you. When I say it, it's not conjecture, I mean, I could sit you down and go, well, here, here's clearly, here's, Hillary's essay about Alinsky, her, her letters with Alinsky. If I call her an Alinskyite, that's not a, a guess. Um, so anyway, so 
what I'm announcing is I'm going to uh, be announcing, what I'm announcing is it in part two, and the only reason I'm not announcing it now is it's not ready to launch. I can't send you there right now, but I'll be able to send you there real darn soon. Uh, in fact, after I finish this Periscope, i got to call my wife <laughs> and talk to her because I haven't talked to her today. We've ta changed text messages. i got to point out, like I said, I've been on the road seven months. I I've seen my wife and kids, uh, most of my kids, about one week. I've done a bunch of work with my son Jack and my, my son Shane, so I've hung out with my kids in the past seven months a, a little bit, but not the little ones because the four- and the six-year-old, they're cute, but when it comes to editing copy or carrying equipment, they're useless. Horrible. The big tall ones are are better at that stuff. So uh, so anyway, so I gotta call my wife and I gotta call my son Shane and I have technical stuff to do to get the website going. So that's that's what I'm announcing without getting into detail because I don't want to I don't want to talk too much. I want you to see it. And we're gonna be launching stuff and you're gonna be able to see it day after day. Plus I'm also gonna be launching a new newsletter, actually a couple of new newsletters, a new podcast, uh, and other stuff. Is that vague enough? I think it is. And other stuff that is, again, my goal is to make you smarter. Not just to inform you, but to actually make you understand better what's going on and how to tell bullshit, how to, how to refine your bullshit detector. So you can look at information from sources you don't agree with and go, well, wait a minute, I think they're right about that. Well, I think they're telling the truth about that one. Does that make sense? So the whole goal really is, is to make you smarter and that's going to happen. So since I have my glasses handy and I use my teeth to open them, let me just finish up quick. Any questions? Yeah, dummy, I, I'm not voting for Trump because I think he cares about me. Uh, my mom and dad cared about me. I'm voting for Trump because Hillary is completely corrupt and Donald Trump is the best chance we have to, because he's attacked both the Democrats and Republicans. And because I'm not asking you to believe this dummy, but because my boss, Steve Bannon, who I know, uh, is now running the Trump campaign. I know Trump is sincere. So you can take your Donald Trump doesn't care maybe about stuff and talk to somebody who bases their decisions on emotions. Does that make sense? Someone says, uh, the fact checker, kinda, kinda. I'll, I'll, I'll save that for the second part of the announcement. I have some ideas about, but I'll, 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 I'll spit, I'll, I don't wanna say much. Let me say this, though. <laughs> Let me say this. Uh, make globalism for I've kind of, kind of done this. So, uh, yeah, I, it's a good idea to, exp to break down globalism, and we're definitely going to be doing that on the news site. We'll definitely be doing that. Here's what I will say about fact-checking. Ready? I mean, you watch, anyone else out there watch Black Mirror? The second announcement's coming in a few hours as soon as I have something specific to announce. It's 5.30 my time. I'm hoping by 10 my time, the second one. I'm, I'm literally getting off this call, this Periscope, and uh, after I call my wife and call my son Shane, and working on getting at least, th there's this concept in marketing, internet marketing in particular, called, yeah, called, uh, called Periscope. You'll see it. Called minimum viable product. And the minimum viable product is the least amount of product you need to actually ship and have something. What features do you need that are essential? And so I'm going to, later tonight, I'm going to have the minimum viable product. And then we'll be rolling out new sections of that product every day. But the goal is tonight to have a minimum viable product and then have, have more. Does that make sense? I hope it does. And I hope you've now learned what a minimum viable product is. Uh, blah, blah, blah. How about the job I asked you about? I didn't see what that is. What's the job? See, I, see, when I'm talking, it's hard for me to read all this stuff. I don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. What about your job? We have contributors on the site? Uh, maybe. 
part of the announcement is going to relate to Citizen Journalism School, which I've been talking about for a while, and I'm going to really uh, hire, hire, no, no, I'm not, hi I'm not hiring anybody. This is a family business initially, because I have kids, uh, some of whom I don't have to pay. So, anything else? I'm going to leave it there, though. That's what I'm going to do. Since we've we've devolved into since we've devolved into nothing useful here, I'll let it go. But anyway, I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Stay tuned. Part two coming later tonight. I have work to do. Bye.